Peace be with you. Welcome to the Institute of All Intelligent Life. My name is Alan Kiesler, and today is Thursday, the 3rd of November, 2016, and we will be continuing this very, very interesting exploration of features in our solar system especially that are obviously not natural and as we did yesterday we will show some photographs and get this information from David Wilcox's new book just published this year The Ascension Mysteries. I finished reading the book and I strongly recommend I'm sure it's available on Amazon or elsewhere so if you can get and read this book The Ascension Mysteries by David Wilcock. So we'll just wait a minute as some more people are joining the class and let us do one deep breath just to focus our minds and make our mind calm and peaceful. Please join me if you like. I'm going to breathe deeply in slowly and then exhale about twice as much time on the exhale. Very good. Do you experience, like I do, an immediate calming of the mind as you do this deep breathing? All right. So, there are a lot of features of our solar system which prove quite definitely that there were, if they're not now, there were advanced, technologically highly advanced civilizations present in our solar system who had built structures and we will review some of the pictures, some of which NASA has released over the last couple of years and uh, some other information that NASA has also released interestingly. So this is evidence that just in the last few years some agreement was made between the cabal, that is the people behind the secret governments of the United States and many other countries in the world behind NASA so that the cabal made some agreement with some extraterrestrial group or some alliance perhaps of extraterrestrials and earthlings uh, and they were required to start releasing more information about the secret space programs, about the truths, about ancient colonization of our solar system and contacts of extraterrestrial races with humanity. So this information is coming out now in the last couple of years. As I said yesterday, NASA has been releasing this information, not publicizing it very much, but it's available there. And David Wilcock has done such a wonderful job of reviewing this information. I'm just going to show you his book again for those of you who who didn't see it. This is The Ascension Mysteries Revealing the Cosmic Battle Between Good and Evil by David Wilcock. So I'm really indebted to this book and I'm just going to show a few pictures from it and say a couple of things that David Wilcock has shared with us just over the last few years and some information proving quite clearly that there is extraterrestrial life or there has been in the past advanced technologically highly advanced civilizations in our solar system and elsewhere. In fact I'm going to start out with the information which I remember reading this a year ago or so, before 
I had seen this book, of course, before it was published. And I don't know if you saw this. It was on the Internet, and its information was discussed, in fact, by leading scientists, including NASA scientists. And this was in October of 2015 that NASA announced that a star, which is numbered KIC 8462852, uh, the star had been discovered, which the, because they were studying different stars to dis detect planets. When a planet passes in front of a star, then the star's brightness is decreased. So they can study that, and that way they can tell there are planets passing in front of stars. So in the process of doing this study, they found this star, which was very, very unusual in terms of the light, the amount of light that the star was releasing. They assumed that the star was releasing a pretty constant amount of light, but something was passing in front of the star, and something was obscuring the light, and in fact, over a period of time, it decreased substantially. And what could explain that? So, and I'm just going to read this quote from David Wilcox's book. So NASA announced the possibility of mega structures. That is, a huge, huge, really huge structure, technological structure, built around the moon, or the star, excuse me, to capture the light of the star for energy, for their energy purposes. So, um, David Wilcox writes that when NASA announced this, we can speculate, as I just suggested, that we might have ancient, extraordinarily large technical technological ruins within the moons of our own solar system, just as NASA had suggested the possibility of this massive structure around this star. So we are discussing, we have been discussing several moons in our solar system, several moons especially of Saturn, um, and a moon of Uranus, and then Ceres, an asteroid, all of which showed clear, in NASA photographs, showed clear uh, objects that were not, or structures or shapes, that were not natural. They were obviously constructed. So, we're going to proceed with discussing uh, the next moon we're going to talk about is Kerberos, Kerberos a newly, newly discovered moon of Pluto, which is extremely lightweight and is totally jet black. This is totally unusual and unexplainable. Why would the moon be so light, and why would it be black, totally black? So David Wilcock is suggesting here we should understand this is not a natural structure. Just like the moons Tethys and Mimas of Saturn that we discussed yesterday, they had those huge, huge craters and looked just like the so-called Death Star moons in the Star Wars series, which, as I said yesterday, is not science fiction, but science fact. But not in a distant galaxy, but in our own galaxy, in our own solar system. So those moons of Saturn appear to be technological instruments that were used as weapons of war or weapons for other purposes. I'm going to discuss that in a minute, what they may have been used for. But it appears that this entire moon of Pluto was also like a spaceship or a, a constructed object rather than just a natural object. And the next, uh, next very, very interesting fact is that this moon of Pluto Kerberos is made of something different, dramatically different, than any other moons. And in fact, the uh, Alan Stern, the main investigator of 
NASA's New Horizon New Horizons mission was quoted here uh, in an article in Wired magazine that if Kerberos is made of something dramatically different than the other moons it may be the relic of a body that crashed into Pluto that body could be artificial so NASA is revealing this information gradually uh, that something very very different than what we've been told in the past is going on in our solar system. What is that? Construction of these massive objects by highly developed, highly advanced civilizations. And another moon is a moon of Saturn named Enceladus, uh, which shows a heat signature. We showed the heat signatures yesterday of the other moons which showed that they were not hot at the equator and cold at the north and south poles but had a very different sort of heat signature revealing the existence of underground structures, cities or things causing the temperature to be very very different than you would expect naturally. So here is a photograph that David Wilcock has in his book of the south pole of Enceladus which has clearly lines, parallel lines, and some strips on 90 degree angles. So I hope you can see this. This is the moon, and here is the close up. You can see those lines there. Again, this is released by NASA. And you can see this is the photograph, a NASA photograph. Of course, they've imposed the parallels uh, and the latitude and longitude lines on it but this is what is at the South Pole so this is pretty clear that's not natural you don't have parallel long long lines like that occurring naturally and this is exactly what an underground a huge underground base or city type structure would look like trouble turning my I think my connection is weak I getting the message my connection is weak and perhaps that's why my camera is not working <laughs> to turn the to turn it to make a selfie my I can't make a selfie now oh, I'll just show here's a picture of David Wilcox All right, I hope you can see me okay. Because the connection is so weak, we lost it for a while there, but the connection is back. I can't seem to change this to turn on to a selfie again. I assume that's the reason, so I'm going to have to do this just by not even seeing myself what you're looking at. I hope you can see me okay. Maybe I'll try. Well, let me just show you this picture while I have it in this mode. We're going to move next to Phobos a moon of Mars and look at this um, this is a clearly constructed tower or monolith on the surface of this moon Phobos, the moon of, of Mars and uh, clearly you can see the shadow this is not natural. Okay, I was able to get it back to selfie style again now. All right, so um, Phobos is a very, very interesting moon, and I just want to talk about it a little bit because uh, Buzz Aldrin, who was, of course, the uh, NASA astronaut who had been to the moon, he talked about Phobos some several years ago on a TV show on C-SPAN and that video is still available on the internet you can do a search for it for Buzz Aldrin, Aldrin reveals the existence of monolith on Mars moon that's the picture I just showed you 
So that one minute clip of Aldrin saying this has had over a million views, unique views, on the internet. So you can look at it. Well, we're back. So I'm having a weak connection and uh, keep getting cut off. But I will go back to what I was reading, this uh, information about the moon of Mars named Phobos, which has this monolith on it. And so this is very, very clear evidence that there was some advanced civilization that had built that structure on Phobos. In fact, David Wilcox quotes also, David Wilcox quotes uh, Hoagland. Richard Hoagland is very famous in the community of persons who are interested in this extraterrestrial phenomenon for having this, uh, many years ago published a book on Mars, uh, on the structures on Mars, including a face, you may have seen that. And um, so Hoagland has explained that he uh, discovered all of this all of these structures on Mars, and not only Phobos, the moon, but Mars itself, but Phobos specifically, he says, that it is hollowed out, and that the European Space Agency had actually made a, you know, you can look underground by ground-penetrating radar, so they had sent a space probe to Mars, called the Mars Express probe, which had radar imaging technology on it, and they scanned inside this moon, and it looks like there are huge rooms hollowed out with right angle walls and floors. So inside of Phobos, there is a whole city. These are huge, quarter to half mile wide geometric chambers inside of this moon. So this was information released by the European Space Agency. And in addition to that, we should realize that this moon of Mars, this is from insider information, this moon of Mars actually was a spaceship, just like that moon of Pluto we just described, which is solid black and very, very light, uh, hollowed out. So that was actually, evidence is, and even has been suggested by uh, NASA, it could be a spaceship. Uh, similarly, this moon of Mars, which is very small, uh, appears to be something that could more likely be a spaceship rather than a natural object at all. Not just a small uh, space object that was then created into was, was turned into a hollowed out object, but it was actually built that way in the beginning. And it. So, I now what I want to move to before we uh, end this discussion is our own moon, because it may be the most shocking and interesting of all of these features that we're discussing in our solar system, because it's our own moon. And I have mentioned this before. Uh, that space uh, secret space program insiders have revealed that the moon is uh, there are many many bases and huge cities and many levels maybe even hundreds of levels uh, on our moon with huge again chambers in them and uh, but of course NASA never was talking like that NASA was always con concealing this information but again just in the last couple of years NASA released some photographs, which I'm going to show you right now from David Wilcox's book, uh, of the moon, which shows a huge square on the moon. This, you will be shocked by this. At least I was. Okay, here are three pictures of the moon. Uh, on the left is what the moon looks like as we see it. In the center is a view of the topography of the moon. And on the right 
is a, a shot of the gravity gradients. In other words, this will show what's under the surface of the moon a little more clearly. And you can see this huge... I'm sorry, I keep losing the signal here. But here on the extreme right, you can see this absolutely massive square. That is not natural. That actually indicates that there is a huge, huge construction underneath the surface of the moon. Oh, this is what NASA has released. So, what are we to make of this? It's This is another evidence that NASA is... Sorry, I keep losing the signal. This is just another indication that NASA itself is publishing this information and uh, commenting on it, indicating, of course, they never come out and say it in so many words that this definitely is proof of an of an ancient civilization, but they are giving this evidence out and they make sort of indirect comments like this. So we are coming near, it's approaching the full disclosure as more and more information is being released again as I said yesterday not openly in the sense of not publicizing it openly but it's open, they do release this information and if you look for it, you can find it, and David Wilcock has done the wonderful job of finding so much of this evidence. So what I want to talk about now is the information, again, from Secret Space Program insiders of the history of our solar system that all of these things reflect that we've been seeing yesterday and today. All these moons, those Death Star moons that we uh, saw pictures of yesterday uh, that have the massive crater, I'm going to show you that picture once again, the massive craters that look just like the Star Wars Death Star. These two moons of Saturn called Mimas and Tethys, you see that huge crater there. I'll just point it, I'm sure you can see it here and here and this is the heat signature you can see very clearly here this indicates that this area is warmer this area is cooler this area is warmer this area is cooler so somehow this crater just like it was in the Star Wars movie this crater is like the place where the death ray is shot from so therefore it's it's being powered by this other area here. So what is the explanation of this? Um, I had mentioned some time ago in this course that there was an ancient, ancient, very ancient, uh, highly advanced civilization which is called the ancient builder race because they evidently built these moons and they were a very peace-loving race uh, but they were technologically very very highly advanced and they were building these structures which we thought were just moons for a long time but they were actually technologically constructed structures they built them to protect our sorry I keep getting cut off uh, but we're back. So as I was saying, the so uh, I'm keep I keep getting the message. The connection is weak. I keep getting cut off. So the uh, suggestion is made to I should move to a different location. So I've moved outside. Maybe uh, the connection will be a little better here. Although it's still weak, you might be getting pixelated pictures of me. Um, but let me just comment. I'm going to have to finish this up quickly because the message is still there. The connection is weak. Um, but I was just wanting to say that this ancient builder race evidently built these structures to protect our solar system and to protect not only our solar system but our section of the galaxy, which is very, very valuable because of this uh, stargate or this portal to other galaxies. So originally the ancient builder race had built these huge structures as protection because they knew there were 
evil extraterrestrial races also who uh, in order to keep them prevent them from coming here to keep them out uh, they built these weapons that could protect us protect our section of the galaxy and at some point they left and we don't know why but after they left these uh, structures were still in place for a long time hundreds of millions of years maybe even because they're technology was so incredible that they could build things that would last for millions of years. They used something uh, which is called transparent aluminum, which is a very, very strong uh, material which we haven't yet developed as far as we know <laughs> in our planet now. But uh, that's why these structures could last so long. So after hundreds of millions of years, after their ancient builder race having left, other uh, beings, of course, were resident here, and as I was discussing uh, yesterday, previously, that evidently after a long period of time, uh, somehow these structures were uh, destroyed, or maybe not destroyed, but put down. That is, the whole, the whole protective matrix was dis, um, disengaged, and the suggestion has been made, very, very interesting, that perhaps our solar system was then used as a sort of prison, just like uh, the English had originally used Australia as all, they sent uh, criminals there who they wanted to get out of their prisons. So Australia was originally like that. So our solar system may have been like that. And a criminal race, you might say, may have been sent here and quarantined here and then those like those Saturn's moons may have been used to prevent them from leaving that is a warning you can't try to escape from this jail and that race then was uh, stationed on especially on the planet of Maldek which was between Mars and Jupiter and as a result of their uh, becoming more powerful they were able to turn off this grid system that was keeping them in their prison of our solar system and that resulted in a war and finally uh, the entire planet of Maldek was destroyed by some of these very very powerful weapons so there's a lot of evidence as I described uh, previously that this is actually what happened that Maldek was shattered and that's what the astro asteroid belt is today and uh, it's very, very amazing <laughs> to become aware of some of this history of our solar system, which just sounds like science fiction. Actually, science fiction is based on this. The whole Star Wars series was based on this. The evil empire in the Star Wars series uh, was based upon this empire that was stationed on Maldek. And we had described last week also the Law of One, series information. They didn't talk all these details that we're discussing now about this evil empire and how it happened to be there, but they did describe the destruction of Maldek. And uh, then as part of that same history of warfare, uh, Mars, the atmosphere of Mars was also destroyed, destroyed so that third density beings could not live on those two planets. And many of them, almost all of the Martian population was transferred here and many people from Maldek also. All right, I think we've uh, passed our half hour time, although a lot of it was taken up by um, breaks in the broadcast because of the connection being weak, but we seem to have established an okay connection now. So I'm just going to look and see if we have any comments. Oh, Rihan Alawala and one other just shared your video. Let them know you appreciate it, I'm being told by Facebook. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Rihan Bai, for sharing the video. And let me just see Abdul Razik also, and two others also. So we have several shares. Thank you very much, all of you. And are there any questions or comments about this? It doesn't look like it. I don't see any.
well, there is a, which thing is behind me? That's a tree. That's a big almond tree behind me. And <clears throat> but any questions or comments about this class? I'm scrolling through these. I, oh, well, there's one comment here. <laughs> Hashem Khan. It is, this is just legend. Yes, it seems like legend. It really does. It, this seems like totally fantastic. This is outside the realm of possibility according to the way our education has trained us. It seems impossible that there could be such huge spacecraft uh, to be like a moon or that our moon itself is more like a spaceship than a natural object. It's, but this information has come out not publicly, openly, but the information is available from people who have been to the moon, who have gone underneath the surface of the moon, who have themselves seen these vast caverns, these huge structures underneath the surface of the moon. So, you can believe it or not, that's up to us, but the information is coming out more and more, and I'm quite sure within a few years uh, we will see that this has become common public knowledge. So we're just a little out there. It's a little legendary, it may seem to you, Khan Sahib, yes. It does seem like a legend, but uh, let us see in the next few years if it doesn't seem like a legend anymore, but it just looks like a history of very, very advanced technology that was far, far beyond the technology we have now. And um, let me see if there are any other comments now. I think there may be some. Okay, Shujauddin Qureshi. I am sorry, but reluctantly say that all galaxy things seem Star Trek fiction. Is it correct to say that only spirit or soul can reach one planet to another? Density is also regarding soul, not this physical being. Okay, there are two comments here. Uh, again, I will repeat. This seems like Star Trek fiction. Yes. Why does it seem like Star Trek fiction? Where did the Star Trek ideas come from? They came when the Secret Space Program insiders revealed to George Lucas and other producers of these TV shows or these movies, they revealed what they had discovered when they went out into the solar system. And when they learned this information, they intentionally gave it to these movie producers on the condition that they present it only as science fiction. And this was a purpose to gradually prepare us for this information. Because it would have been too shocking that, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, 50 years almost now, these things have been coming out. It would have been too shocking for us to suddenly receive all this information. So it was first introduced as science fiction. And I've said before in this class and on my Facebook page previously, I've announced that I met Arthur C. Clarke in 1985 in his bungalow in Colombo, Sri Lanka. And he indicated at that time that what he was writing about was not science fiction. In fact, he said plainly that he had met an extraterrestrial. So he was not allowed to openly reveal this. He maybe took a risk even by talking to me and a friend of mine who had been to visit him. But all of this information that you think is Star Trek fiction, it's not fiction. Star Trek itself was based on this factual information, which only now is starting to be released by NASA as factual. So, okay, your other part of your comment is uh, that it is only spirit or soul can reach one planet to other. Um, no. <laughs> there are many human beings who have gone to the moon and Mars and actually to many other star systems. You have to do the research yourself. Don't believe me. Do some research, of course, because the Internet is so full of disinformation also, it's very difficult to get through all of that intentionally created false information. Uh, but if you use your own discrimination, use your meditative and praying, praying abilities to discriminate between those falsities and the real fact, you will be able to discriminate and you will be able to understand what is true. So 
do this research, as I explained before. Um, there is also another very, very important book, Insiders Reveal Secret Space Programs and Extraterrestrial Alliances by Michael Sala. That book also is very, very clear uh, and gives a lot of information. And especially with Will, uh, William Tompkins, who himself was a defense engineer, worked for the Navy, and designed spacecraft. And he, uh, so do, do, do these searches for William Tompkins, uh, Michael Sala, exopolitics.org, and uh, David Wilcock, and you will see what I'm saying is full of evidence. There's a lot of evidence, much more than what I'm able to present here. So uh, density is also regarding soul, not this physical being. Well, density is about physical being, and but it's really about the consciousness. It's about the level of awareness, yes. Um, <clears throat> All right. So Chuck Rays, are you familiar with the term Dyson Sphere? Dyson Sphere, Dyson Sphere you mean? Yes, that's just what I'm talking about when I mentioned about that star, which by the apparent dimming of the light, uh, by the real dimming of the light, it apparently looked like, and NASA even suggested this Dyson Sphere idea, that there was a huge structure built around the star in order, evidently, to capture the energy of the star. The heat, the light of the star, as we know from our sun, our sun is very bright and we don't, we can get a lot of energy from it, but a highly advanced civilization might need more energy and they could capture that energy by building this huge Dyson sphere around their sun, around their star. And that information is shocking. This looks legendary, this looks like science fiction, but NASA is even suggesting that possibility. So this is another evidence. Yes, the Dyson sphere is another evidence that NASA is now being required by this agreement, this treaty with extraterrestrial and alliance groups, that they have to start revealing this information as at least factual possibility, if not fact, uh, r rather than concealing it. Uh, NASA has been totally concealing all their, uh, the real space program, which is behind NASA, which uh, was called the Solar Warden originally. The Solar Warden was the Navy program where they first went out into space to the moon, to Mars, long before NASA had gone to the moon, the United States had gone to the moon, and before the United States, even back in the 1930s, Germany had gone to the moon and to Mars. So this information has all been kept very, very secret, uh, but now it's coming out. So please forgive me <laughs> if what I'm saying seems like science fiction, it's just the opposite way around. The science fiction was based on these facts that we did not know were true, but now the truth is coming out. So understand that those two moons of Saturn look just like that Death Star weapon in Star Wars. Why? They saw those moons up close, they understood what they were, and Star Wars was based upon such things. It's only now in the last year or two that we are seeing the evidence, the clear evidence, photographic evidence, that these moons are actually technologically created weapons like Star Wars revealed as fiction, although it was fact. Okay, our time is up, so thank you all very, very much. I'm sorry if this is too shocking that you must think of it so only as a legend you can't accept, but it's important that we understand this information because in the very near future uh, there is going to be more open contact and disclosure of the extraterrestrial presence, so we have to get ready for it quickly. Because if we're not ready for it, it will, well, one of two things will happen. It will further delay the disclosure, or when it does happen, we won't be able to handle it and we might go crazy. So <laughs> I'm trying to help everyone become ready for this. So let me uh, just announce one more thing before I end, and that is that the daylight savings time will end on Sunday of this week uh, in the United States and many states uh, every summer in order to have more time in the evening to grow your own garden. That was the original purpose 
of the daylight savings time in the United States during the Second World War. So the clock has shifted one hour. So right now we're still on this summertime or daylight savings time, but that will end this weekend. So starting next Monday, the class time will remain the same here in California, but the California time will change, so it will shift to 7.30 p.m. Pakistan time, or 2.30 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. All right. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, okay, just I see one more comment here by Chuck Rays, or one more question, I should say. Why do you think that only a few people with the knowledge of other intelligent life can handle the truth, but we cannot? No, we can all handle it, but it takes a little introduction. Because we've been so miseducated, uh, it, it's a little difficult at first. So everyone will be able to handle it, but it has to be introduced gradually. That's exactly why the science fiction was introduced, to gradually make these ideas common knowledge, so that when it did come out, it would be understandable. So now, but it's coming out now, not as fiction anymore. So it's difficult. A lot of people have trouble handling it, but let us understand this is really what's happening and share it as much as you can. Try to do as I'm doing. Uh, share it with your friends and others so that more and more people can be ready for this full disclosure of the truth about extraterrestrials, which is going to happen uh, within a few years, <laughs> not more than 10 years, I think. Certainly five to ten years at the most we'll be seeing full disclosure of all of this information. It might happen this year or next year even. <laughs> okay, thank you all very much. See you tomorrow at 6.30 and the rest of this week 6.30 and next week at 7.30. Pakistan time in the evening, California time in the morning. May God protect us all. <laughs>